about the format of the slide, uh, it'll be okay. We'll just, we'll just keep going. I'm here to talk about the competency-based education in Moodle. So this was a feature that we added in 3.1, but we were working on it for quite a while before then, um, trying to get feedback from lots of people uh, and make sure that we built something that was really flexible and was going to meet lots of the needs of all the different um, types of uses of competencies in uh, education and training, um, workplace environments and all these other, other situations. So it is a really um, broad topic. Um, The, uh, and it has lots of different names uh, depending on where it's used. So sometimes people call it any one of these different names depending on the industry. Um, but it all really boils down to the same thing. It's a set of proficiency statements um, that belong to a user that uh, say what they can and can't do and where is the evidence uh, that demonstrates that they can or can't do a particular uh, activity or or skill or, um, or piece of knowledge. Um, as you can see, there's a uh, worldwide demand for this feature. There's um, different organizations around the world who define standards for competencies. Uh, and it comes down to whether they're being used in education or training. Um, but they are really important and the, uh, and the uh, they're used for standardization of uh, certifications and uh, accreditation and things like that. In Australia, we have the Australian Curriculum Authority that's defining all standards for, um, for uh, primary schools and high schools. Uh, and they produce uh, some, some very comprehensive frameworks uh, that match up to the Australian curriculum, which come down to, a, uh, again, it's a statement of things that, that the students can or, or cannot do and the list of evidence. Um, but whether a teacher would actually take that framework and apply it directly uh, in Moodle and trying to track all those things individually is not, not uh, necessarily true. Uh, so it might just be that as a whole they say this is the curriculum that we've taught you and instead of marking things individually we might just say well um, you've achieved all of these things or you, or you haven't quite achieved them yet. Um, uh, but in other situations, you do actually want to drill right down to the individual skills and, and see the evidence that was gathered for each one. So, uh, so it is used very differently depending on the, the industry and the application. So we did um, lots of requirements analysis before we start, and I've been coming to um, the Australian moots and other moots and asking people directly for their feedback on competencies, and I've been asking in forums and getting... Uh, assistance from lots of people who are actually interested in using this feature, um, which is obviously really helpful. Uh, when we started doing the development on this feature, the University of Montreal uh, contacted us and said that they really need this feature. Um, they were thinking of developing it themselves, uh, but they would rather work with Moodle uh, directly to help get this into Moodle core in a way that is flexible and everybody can use it in the future. So, um, the actual development was done as a collaboration between Moodle HQ and Montreal. They had some developers working uh, on the other side of the world in the exact opposite time zone. Um, and so was, we were working 24 hours a day on it. <laughs> um, so this was the primary team of developers that worked on it. Uh, the top three are from Moodle and the bottom three were from the University of Montreal and uh, they were a really big help and uh, um, that not only from the development side but also because they wanted to use this feature. So when we were trying to put something in and, and find out whether that was going to be a useful feature or whether we should not put it in, um, they would be able to give us direct feedback on, on what were the critical elements and what were the things that um, we should not do straight away. So um, what is it to, so it means different, it's used by different roles in Moodle. So program designers um, can use uh, competencies uh, when they're designing a course that has to be used for accredit accreditation. Um, they might have a list of uh, 
these are the outcomes that you need to teach in this course. Um, and you, later on, you might have to actually provide evidence that you've taught all of these individual things. Uh, teachers um, use it when they're designing their own courses. Uh, so they can see here, it helps them in planning out their course material. So, um, so what you can do is you can uh, say from the competency frameworks that are installed uh, in this Moodle site, uh, this course needs to teach this aspect. So there might be 10 competencies, there might be 30 competencies that they have to teach in the course. So they link the, all those competencies into the course and then they have a view in the course, they can say, well, which activities and resources have I provided and which of the competencies do they match up to? And they can identify competencies that aren't covered by any of the activities or resources and they can also identify activities and resources that aren't covering any competencies. Um, whether or not that's a problem, it, it, it's not necessarily a problem, but it just helps them when they're looking overall to say, have I covered all the material that I need to cover or given at least resources for everything. The other thing that teachers can do is they can see um, their students' progress as they're learning the competencies. Uh, which ones have they achieved, which ones um, are the students uh, self-assessing and saying, I think I have achieved this. And then the teachers can come in and, and they can identify the high achievers and the low achievers um, and, and also review people's competencies for them. Uh, so I mentioned students can, can self-assess, um, they can also see which uh, competencies are covered by the courses um, that are available or they can say uh, I have this competency that I need to achieve in my learning plan uh, ha find me a course that will teach me this competency the other thing for students is that um, the competencies themselves actually belong to the student they have a learning plan that belongs to them uh, if you configure the permissions um, in a certain way. The students can create their own learning plans so they can say, these are all the skills or, or, or knowledge that I want to learn and then they can find courses that will teach them those things. Or it could be um, assigned to them uh, as part of a course or degree that these are all the things that you, are, you need to learn. Um, and then they will see where they're up to in their learning plan, how, far, how much they've learned they'll be able to go and they'll actually see in their learning plan, here is all the evidence I have uh, for every competency. And it's across courses as well. So um, as they go through a three-year degree, they will just build up this long list of evidence for all of the things. And at the end, they have this great portfolio. It's like not, I just got a piece of paper, but here are all the skills that I learned. So um, I mentioned CBEs, a bit different for everybody. So uh, what I'm going to do now is just sort of give you a conceptual view. It's not looking at actual Moodle, but it's just how the pieces fit together um, so you have some idea of how the system works in Moodle. Um, at the top level, you have a, a stand, you could have a standards body um, who's defining a competency framework. A competency framework is a big set of these uh, skills and knowledge, and it uh, can be organized in a hierarchy, so um, in a tree-like structure where you, a top-level competency can contain sub-competencies and they can have sub-competencies. Um, and you can configure it so that when you achieve all of the sub-competencies, they will roll up automatically, um, or you can have more advanced rules for how those things get automatically uh, assigned and completed. To actually get a competency framework into Moodle, um, you can either manually create them, but often these things have thousands of competencies, so ideally you'll have a way to import them. Um, there are some plugins in the Plugins DB that will let you import competency frameworks. Uh, the formats that we've looked at um, are CSV and RDF, which is a type of XML. For example, the Australian curriculum files come in RDF, um, and there's also a website called Achievement Standards Network, which has a, a big list of uh, competency frameworks in XML format. 
Um, but the difficulty I found is that uh, all the different sectors and industries define these in different formats. So um, you may need to consider uh, paying for some development to import your framework um, in the format that you have it, or converting that framework into CSV uh, and using the CSV as an import. Um, I don't recommend manually creating these things because uh, not only the first time it will be a pain, but when they update it, you'll, you'll have real trouble trying to work out what's changed. So um, competencies, uh, the competency framework has a list of these competencies. And for each competency, uh, you can assign a scale, which indicates how you actually mark the competency. So the scales are um, people use different ra rating scales to mark them. But when you import them into Moodle, uh, at some point, we need to be able to decide what is proficient and what isn't. So there's a configuration page where you say these values from the scale are proficient and these ones aren't. There's also another situation where if a competency is automatically achieved, we need to know which value from the scale we should assign. So that's another option that you have to set up um, when you, you specify the scale for the competency framework. Um, you then take some of those competencies from the framework and you assign them to a a learning plan template. This is for administration, so you can assign the same learning plan to thousands of uh, users and um, and have them update when you change the plan. Um, then you assign the learning plan template to thousands of users. And then uh, the other side is that you assign competencies to a course. So this is where I said you actually say, in this course, I'm going to teach these specific competencies. Then within the course, um, either automatically or manually, uh, you will go through and you will rate the students against each of the competencies for the course. Um, the students may not have that competency in any of their learning plans, but you still rate them. Uh, because in future, if they ever do add that competency to a learning plan, it will come in with all of the evidence that they've already gathered. Um, and then uh, every time that you uh, rate a student or something automatically says that they've uh, had some evidence, uh, it gets they get a piece of evidence attached to that competency. When they look at a competency, they can see the long list of evidence um, that uh, from all of their history uh, that they've ever achieved for that competency. Um, so now I just have some quick screenshots. I'm a bit low on time, so I'll go through these a little bit quickly. Uh, so a student has their personal learning plan. They can see some kind of progress indication of how many competencies they've achieved and they can drill down on each one of those competencies and see all the evidence for it. They access that through their dashboard. They have the opportunity to self-assess their own competency and request that somebody come in and review the evidence and either award them or not award them the competency. They can upload uh, files and provide URLs of evidence of prior learning for any of their competencies. They can see uh, their progress in a course as to how many competencies they've achieved. And they can see their progress in a, a learning plan. And they can find courses uh, based on the competencies that they need to complete their learning plans. Uh, a course designer can see the, the competencies that aren't linked to any activities or resources in the course. They can configure rules to either automatically or manually uh, complete the competencies for a course. They can find the competencies that students aren't achieving in their course. So um, there may be that they haven't provided enough an opportunity for students to achieve those competencies, or they, or they might want to provide more support and resources. 
Um, this is the uh, view of the administrator who's importing uh, some frameworks and assigning uh, learning plans to cohorts. So cohorts is a group of users outside of courses uh, in Moodle. So that's how you as would assign a learning plan template to a lot of users and, and keep it up to date. Um, yeah, and then here's, that's where I got the images from. So I know that was a very quick uh, overview of competencies. Uh, it's a very detailed uh, topic. So um, I guess this is just a taste and you can go away and, and, and learn more. Thank you.